welcome to the Jen and Margie show. We have guest host Mike Terosian with us again. I'm Margie Wigan, and uh, we have a couple things to talk about tonight. We're going to start with a discussion on concussion. Are they worth the risk? Is sports worth the risk of a concussion? The second thing we're going to talk about is the family fun day and, and everything that went on Saturday the 16th this past weekend. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the Equifax breach. Did you get the letter in the mail that said your credit had been compromised? Mm, I didn't get the letter. I didn't get the letter. But I went online and I was able to uh, add my last four of my social and a few other things. And they said, yep, you were compromised. You were? Yes. I don't know. A friend of mine got a letter and a, a disc. Anyway, we'll talk about yeah. that later. Um, we have a, a treat in store, which is we have our guest Tom Nappy here. Usually we're seeing Tom Nappy at the news desk or behind a camera. So it's kind of fun. Thank you so much for graciously agreeing to um, be with us for a little bit of conversation. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So have you ever had a concussion? You know, sadly, no. What little sports sadly, that I played, no. uh, I did fall down a lot, hit my head a lot. But no, I never had a concussion, I, well, that I could tell. Well, that's what I was going to um, say. But I, other than seeing stars, that's what I'm when you hit, about. That was, that's probably the closest. But nothing... So no. you didn't have your bell rung? Is that what they say? Not to, yeah, my bell I, rung? I don't think I. I don't think I have. So, <laughs> I do you know? <laughs> do you know the um, symptoms of concussion? You guys yes. know that? I know some of them. Yep. Some of them. <laughs> what are? What do you remember? Well, the ones I know is uh, extreme headaches, could be one of them. Yeah. Um, dizziness, um, forgetting momentarily where you are. Uh, forgetting things in general, mm -hmm. and it's about all I can name off the top of my head. I know I know that loss of consciousness is one of them, but it's not always. You don't always lose consciousness if you get concussed. You can get concussed and yeah. right. still be fully conscious the whole time. I think sometimes um, throwing up. You know, if someone, mm -hmm. yeah, right? That's usually someone that's. And then I think dilated dilated pupils or tiny pupils yep. um, could be. So lots of things to look for. Usually when a kid falls down at the playground, we, we pick them up and we look at their eyes and we ask them if they remember their name, or if their head hurts, if they're dizzy. Do you have an email in there? Nothing yet. Okay. Uh, it's just booting, so it's... Good. So we would love it if you join the conversation. Help us think about this. Are concussions something that might prevent you from signing your kid up for a sport? I know um, my son talked about football and I said, you know what, you have a really good brain. I don't want you to mess that up. I was afraid that he would crash and, you know, not not be the same. And I didn't want to ruin his, whatever, thinking power. Well, Did your mom say that to you or she let you? Oh, no, they let me play. I yeah. mean, as a concerned parent, I could see where you're coming from. Uh, because there is a risk. There's a risk in any sport. But I think they make the helmets a lot better nowadays. And they're... Uh, working on new ways to make the helmets protect the head even more. So I really do think that with rule changes and the equipment changes that they are taking precautions at preventing concussions. But, you know, I'm not a parent, but right. if I was, I, I don't think I could hold my kid back from if he wanted to play football because it really is a great sport and you learn right. so much by playing the game. Well, and I, I love watching football. Sure. So I, but I have to say that watching Wes Welker in his last – game or two with the Patriots, he got crashed and flipped and oh my gosh, and then he wasn't with the team anymore. So my thought was he got hit too many times and they just thought, you know, is he really going to be able to function fully? I, I just felt so bad for him. Right. Well, with me playing sports, my mother didn't want me to do it. She didn't want me to get hurt. She was afraid of broken arms and broken legs and concussions weren't right. really mentioned back in right. the... Dark day. ages. <laughs> we're still throwing in stones instead of pigskins. Um, but what? as well, I know it just sounds <laughs> funny. So basically, from a point of um, as a parent, I couldn't wait for my kid to put on his football to helmet watch. first year yeah. lights and, yeah. and pop on it. And the technology today, and the awareness today of uh, sports injuries mostly concussions now, the uh, topic, yeah. it is, I would feel better today having my kid play sports True. than I would back then. 
And yeah. back then, I was fine with it, too. But I could see someone's concern. Um, there is, there's a lot more testing. They test all the student, every student athlete, any sport, you are tested. And that's a baseline. And then if something happens to you, you're tested again. And until you're mm -hmm. back to that baseline, it's not, you're not ready to come back from a concussion. Because, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned from doing a few doctor talk shows here in, in, my, uh, um, in my travels is you got to get taken out of commission. Just like if you yeah. tweak your shoulder, you, you, you just put in a sling and you rest, don't move it, whatever. Same right. thing with a concussion. Right. You just go and you rest your brain, and then you gradually return yourself to whether it's work or play or, or sports. Yeah, and I had heard uh, recently, this is what started me thinking about this topic. Uh, well, I guess I have thought about it for a while because I coached soccer and I had one of my kids come in with a helmet and say, I'm ready to play. I had a concussion, but I have a helmet so I can play. And I thought, I don't know. But his parents seemed on board with that. The doctor apparently said it was okay. Um, but there's this cool technology, which you were talking about. I think this is the one. I don't know if the guy is a WPI, but he invented some kind of... Um, sensor material that can tell what's happening inside the brain so it's not just something that cushions the brain but it actually has sensors to tell if there has been impact to the brain you know the the brain bounced around yeah. I think of Liam wow. Neeson's wife right who was in oh, that yeah. ski accident gone because her brain they that's described it, it and brain bounces around in your skull all the doctors I talked to that's exactly what concussion is it's that yeah. movement of the brain right. back and forth side by side front whatever Right. Your brain's not supposed to do that. Right. It's supposed to be still up there. Mm. We got all this skull here to, well, it's supposed to be keep us thinking, not still. No, it's I'm supposed to be kidding, still, kidding, yeah, kidding. right. There you go. But yeah, yeah and, and you got that nice piece of bone that's supposed to protect it, but what's going to protect it from sloshing around inside? Right. Ew. Well, one thing I think uh, people do a lot is they compare high school football to professional football. Uh huh. And that's True. something I don't think you could do because, you let's can. face it, in professional football, they're hitting so much harder oh my gosh. than they are in high right. school football. Right, but you're also hitting more professionally. You should know how to hit better as a pro, college or pro than you do in high school, right. you, like you would better than the kids that are Yeah, but they water. teach you in high school as well. They you know, teach it, but again, right. age has something. You see that freshman student take the field, and, and you see him next year as a sophomore, and one year makes a difference, you know? They're smarter and, and they're more controlled. And uh, with these concussions, a concussion is a brain injury. It's a definite injury to the brain. It's not... You don't need gray matter coming out of your head to be a brain injury. Right. A brain injury happens in a In fact, concussion. most of the time you wouldn't even notice you have it. Right. Yeah, it's inside. And a concussion happens, I, I was looked up in the uh, Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts, just located next door to Westboro. Uh, every 13 seconds, someone gets a concussion. Every 13 seconds. So, I, so someone, um, this is one thing that came out of the Boston Globe. Someone forwarded me today. Study links youth football great, to greater risk of later health problems. You know, and it's talking about tackle football under the age of 12, exposes uh, kids to repetitive head injuries that may double their risk of behavioral problems and triple their chances of suffering depression later. And I know that we've had people like Junior Seau, you know, that, that, that syndrome where they've had too many concussions and then they, they are not mentally fit and mm -hmm. do damage to themselves or, or others. Um, and that's a good point because I think football when you're 12 years old is probably a lot more risky than it is when you're in high school. Right. Absolutely. Because when you're 12, you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, right. And you, you're, you're, being, you're surrounded by volunteers that, you know, have the knowledge to help you. And, but, again, the volunteers are not professional coaches. They're not, right. You don't have professional trainers looking over everything you do. I mean, how many, how many doctors are on the Patriots? Right. You know, <laughs> not just trainers, but doctors do they have. You know, it's... And high school to, trainers now have to go through a special course just for concussions. Just for concussions. Well, yeah. they actually made... I work at Elmwood School, elementary school. They made us know what the symptoms of concussion were because if we're out on the playground and you know the kids are playing Newcomb and they I tell them this is not tackle sport we're not tackling but still they go head to head going for right. the ball sure. you mm -hmm. know we have to assess them if, and actually I send everyone in that hits their head because I would rather have the nurse look at them and go through all the assessment 
and then say, go ahead, you're fine. You know, then find out that they um, really hurt themselves. And then when I was at the football game, which I love, I love football actually, but every time they go head to head like mountain goats, I just think, how can that, pa- how yeah. can that protect them? I can hear the helmet go crack. Well, you're not supposed to go helmet to helmet. They you're do. Not supposed to. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them do, but oh you're not supposed goodness. to. And, the, and typically, the officials now they will call that. They've they become do. a lot more hard All on right. that. They yeah. don't want people. Uh, banging their heads against the other guy's head. Um, right. <laughs> that's just asking for just, a concussion. And, and even even not the brain, but just I used to work for a chiropractor, and thinking about the compression of the all the vertebrae. If you ram your head into a, a hard, you know, like a brick wall, right. that all of your vertebrae are going to compact or subluxate or ouch, something terrible. So. Yeah, the kick, you know, the, one of the other things I learned too is the concussion there um, causes a temporary disturbance of your uh, your uh, brain cell functions. Of course it does. And and your brain leaks potassium and it's, it's well, and just, it swells. You know, it's, it's a bruise. It's nothing else. It's bruised, so it's going to swell. And, and, and know, then that's where the headaches come headache, from. Headache because your brain just swelled. And then, then you know, right, you, know, you get that headache. You got your bell rung, and yeah. now you're feeling good. The next day, you're ready to get back at it, and it's just you know. Sometimes it doesn't hit you until a few days later. Or you have that. That's even the worst right. part is when right. you come out not even knowing, and then also two days later, then you figure out, oh yeah, maybe it was that. Well, and I know also that the kids that that I know did have concussions were not allowed to read. They're not allowed to do any heavy brain activity, you know, which is very interesting to me because it doesn't seem like your brain works as in a physical way, you know, that your body would work. But apparently it strains your brain to, to think hard. You really, do you guys, do you ever watch Monty Python? Oh, as much as possible. And the guy goes, my brain hurts. That's all I can think of, you know, when they're talking about straining your brain and the concussion and you have to rest, you can't, you can't think, basically. Right. I think that's more for, like, severe concussions because yeah, I mean, there is different types of concussions. Yeah. There's, there's concussions that, I mean, all concussions are bad, but there are concussions that are worse than others. Right. There's ones that are, you know, light and not too bad, and they won't be able to play football with them. Uh, but then there's concussions that are very severe, and right. I think that's the kind where you can't really even concentrate on words because, you know, you get a headache just trying to concentrate on something. Right. So there's different degrees of it. I'm sure that's true. And that's what, that's what really struck me was, which, these, which I can't remember which kids, it was more than one kid that I knew wasn't able to read anything. Uh, maybe some friends of yeah. my son's. Not supposed to read, not supposed to do that. So their level of concussion was serious enough that that was going to either do damage to their brain wow. or I, I think that's, that's the only scary. thing, or make, <laughs> maybe have a concussion, a headache. But, and then, of course, I think about Giselle Bunchen, who said Tom Brady has had concussions, and I can't imagine how he wouldn't have. You know, he doesn't, he takes some hits. Well, sure does. Oh, absolutely. I so. mean, they're hitting the hardest there is in football and right. any kind of football. Uh, so... You know, uh, these guys are getting hit a lot. I mean, that's why careers don't typically last that long right. in gotta, the NFL. And, and players have become more smart, too. They're retiring sooner in the NFL. <laughs> I know, oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, With why all not? Their faculties do it, intact. Do it now because you need your brain later. Uh, an email. Uh, I think the biggest problem is the secondary con- con- concussions. Kids need not to be allowed to play with a concussion, right. which I agree with is that. the monitoring and the testing beforehand. I don't know what level, um, as far as I've been out of the Pop Warner game for forever, and I know that the coaches do go through concussion awareness. Right, we had to do that for soccer. But is there testing up, up front for them? I mean, how much, uh, no. how often do you do it? Let yeah, it I don't front. think so, but we had to, as a coach, soccer coach, yeah. with HISA, Hop Continue Soccer, we were, had concussion training, right. and we were not allowed to, we, we were told if you have any doubt, you keep that kid out. Right. And well, the kids would argue, I'm fine, I'm fine. Right. Sit down now. Well, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, though, but I think even for little kids' football games, peewee football, that there is always some kind of medical person uh, present mm-hmm. at the games. Well, that's, that's your basic Not first aid and so games. forth. Oh, for a football, a pop yeah. honor, it's yeah. a requirement to have EMTs on hand. Right. And which, is, which is nice to have that. It's... Um, it, it, there were also at practices too, where, um, like when I was coaching, we had two coaches that were 
uh, EMTs. And so they basically covered us while we were our regular practices during the week. But when it comes to games, you had an EMT just dedicated to the field. Mm -hmm. um, does that help with the early awareness of concussion? No, I mean, that first hit, you know, where the kid's coming out, you, you're looking for the disformed arms and legs and you're looking for blood or, or, or something. That's what those guys are Well, if you're for. not trained professionally. No, yeah, are. no, I but, think now they look for concussion, now, absolutely. But now when it comes to the concussion, yeah. uh, where the kid's got his bell rung, a, a stranger such as that first responder isn't going to know that kid. The coach is going to know him better because he's his coach. Right. And having the coaches have that concussion training is most important because you're going to see the difference. Oh, yeah, exactly. he's not right. Right, exactly right. So that's why I really appreciated that the um, that Heisa had that training because I didn't, I mean, I had a vague idea, ouch, your head hurts, but, you know, and they told us all the things to look for and, and when in doubt, keep them out. That was the most important thing because the kids are going to want to keep playing. I'm fine, I'm fine, right. and they're going, you know, sideways across the field. Because oh, most of the time they don't feel it. Right. They won't feel it until later. Right. They won't sure. feel it until their head's pounding, they're getting headaches. Right. Uh, another, another comment came in. It says, America loves its football, but how many damaged people well, that's is acceptable thing. for our viewing pleasure? That's the thing. I mean, look what you watch on TV. Right? Oh. And you look at these athletes. It, you know, people, people say, I'm crazy, I ride a motorcycle. Well, you know, is it worth the risk? Yeah. To you it is. Yeah. It's right. another so subject. What, what but do you they have know? to wear a helmet. But it's against the law if you don't. In Massachusetts. Right. Oh. Yes. So my point is, what, what is it, you know, is it worth the risk? You know, that's, 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 question. that's the big question. Yeah. Are they worth the risk? And, well, you know, someone wants to play. I, I think youth sports is a wonderful thing, and I don't think I agree. they should not do it. I mean, right. some people are going to get hurt. It happens. Some people already have pre-existing conditions that don't come out until an like injury right. in football. Yeah. Yep. And then um, I was thinking that, the, you know, foot, um, not just football and soccer, but Muhammad Ali, didn't he have P Parkinson's because of too many hits to the head? I you know, know. Those, yeah. those kinds of things can develop Could, out of concussions. Right, exactly. So I think, you know, it's really a question. You, it's an implied risk. You have to know going into the sport, this is something that may happen. Right. Do your best to protect the kid, obviously, and make them aware that you need to tell your coach if you feel weird when you get hit. And I was so excited to hear this new technology in the helmets that could evaluate right. the force of the hit and the effect on the brain. And I also like the technology that helps prevent them in the first place, which is even more important. You know, they all get all the new styles helmets. But, right. But that's enough of that. So we're going to move on. Yeah. And when we come back... We are going to be talking about the good old family fun day at, uh, that we had this past weekend and Saturday. So right. we'll be right back after Were this. Were you there? Me. Give us a call. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, I'm David. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Alma and Gal, and we love HKM. Hey, I want to be Kim. Camp. And I volunteer for HCAM TV. I watch HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. We love HCAM TV. Woo! This week, uh, concerts on the common. Hop in Zone. Barbara Kessler plays her original music and some covers on the gazebo. This week on All About Hopkinen, Mary Arnott introduces us to the new library director, Heather Backman. ...space in what used to be sort of the old circulation area, um, and then we have a classroom downstairs. So um, that's really exciting. We will be permitting um, nonprofit and community organizations to book those. Um, information will be forthcoming sometime in October about that. And we're back. Welcome back to Jen and Margie Live. We actually have Mike Terosian here as our guest host, and we have Tom Nappy as our guest. And before we uh, go into our next segment, which is going to be about Family Day that we just had 
courtesy of the 300th um, committee. I just want to say happy Rosh Hashanah to our Jewish friends who are celebrating. Tonight is the first night. Um, I know because I have Jewish ex-laws um, that you say Lashana Tova, which is literally, I think, head of the year. Um, so this is the Jewish New Year that they've celebrated for 5,000 some odd. I just, it's a wonderful um, celebration, great food. So hope everybody's having a great time. I'm sure you're not watching TV because you're sitting down with your family. Um, well, but they're watching this show, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but they'll know. But they'll know when they watch it tomorrow that yeah, we, should, we, we, we wish them a happy it. holiday. Um, happy and a healthy year. So, um, okay, so Family Fun Day. Oh, my gosh, what an amazing day. Poly Arts in the morning, 10 to, 10 to 4. Right. And then Family Fun Day started at... I keep calling it family fun. I think it was just family day. Happy family day. Right. That's Started at two, and and ended with the fireworks, which were incredible. Um, so, were you both at Poly Arts or just at? Um, Tom made Poly Arts. I, I was yeah, uh, setting I up for family day. Yeah. I stopped by all three. I started Me off too. the day at Poly Arts. Very nice as usual. The weather was perfect. It was. I could have used the swimming pool, but besides uh -oh. that, it was. But perfect. in the morning, <laughs> the morning was cool and cloudy. Yeah, right. At, in, till yeah. And there was a chance of rain, but then it right. went away, and the sun came out, and it was gorgeous. And so. it was really hot for yeah. family day. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, it heated up for that, but uh, still a great time, great event. Uh, I couldn't believe how many people were there. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Great turnout. So do you... Um, I, I went to both three, all three as well. Um, one of the things that I hadn't seen before was an amazing photographer at the end of one of the, you know, by center school, kind of, or more near One Ash. And he had this incredible photograph of a, of a great gray owl coming straight at the camera. Did you see that? I missed His that last one. name was Martin. Yeah, they make it. Um, so I don't know yeah. if he, yeah, it was amazing. I missed I, that one. It was unbelievable. I don't know how they found him, but I do know there's a jurying process now um, because I, I've sold, actually, I sold these um, for Zoe Wrap Stones and did that for a while. Yeah, so awesome. fun. Just a real quick, uh, quick shout out to Ginny and Jason. They uh, they liked our Facebook feed. Yay! Ginny and Jason, thank you very much. Thanks, Ginny and Jason. So, and uh, family day. Yeah, I got there around noontime to set up. We H game had a booth there to um, tell people who we are and what we are. And, and uh, at the last break, I had a little montage of everyone saying that they like or watch H cam. Or, oh, nice. and, By the way, uh, check out the new segment on our website. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the new segment. There you go. How do they find the website? HCam.tv. HCam.tv slash news? No. Or slash HCam Tom Nappy? It'll be right, right there on the front. All, right. all, the, all the latest news is up There's a news the section right at the top. You can click to. He Perfect. has a couple of pages on his own. He's, I just want he's people just to amazing. know how to find him. It's all over the place. N-A-P-P-I, <laughs> Nappy. <laughs> So, I took and uh, set up a booth there, and I could not believe it was five minutes to two, and the wave of people just showed up. Yeah. And they were just started coming, yep. and it was nonstop. They had a blast. There was jugglers there. I, he was juggling flames and stuff. And, what? I missed yeah, that. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was right across from us, the, the Vineyard Church's oh. booth. He came right out in the middle, and wow. he was juggling everything but chainsaws. You know? Oh, he was good. He was, yeah. he was awesome. <laughs> Uh, the music was great. Dan yes. Cloutier, Amanda Maffei. Well, um, wait, they started with some beautiful performances by from the German, some in, in the Russian chorus, Russian chorus first that's what was, in yes. some amazing costumes. Yeah, the costumes Little, were adorable. And then there were some um, Indian performances. Mm -hmm. um, the same people that performed, or one group that had performed at um, Multicultural Day that the Youth Commission right. put on. Oh, great. And oh my gosh, they're just. One of the three of the four of the girls are at my school, so yes. that's how we found them. And the mother, I think it's um, forgive me if I got the name wrong. I think it's Dristi and her daughter Arshia um, did an incredible, just so beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and, and uh, then the perform the musical performance. And of course, I get the clear. I love this. Uh, the uh, email was the worst part of family day. Everything in the world in every town was scheduled. I Saturday. know what was up there. That's the, it that was Oakdale Day, Ashland Day, Austin, Harris Day. And wasn't Westboro doing something? Ashland. No, Westboro did their 300th last week. Something they had their big 300th was, birthday. Unless yeah, they had you're, another. You're at, whoever that is is absolutely right. Yeah, Framingham. Like Upton things. did something. Framingham and Natick had craft things going yeah. on. It was just amazing. Right. That's and, very but true. it is the most popular weekend. Wow. 
yeah. to do anything. But, because, the, but that makes the turnout here even more Because it's your first. True. That's true. It's your first Everyone came real, here. It's your first real weekend <laughs> after we school is back. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Labor Day's done and school is back in session. That's your very first yeah. weekend, yeah. and that's when everyone jumps all over it. But Tom's right. We had so many people. Oh, it was a they blast. all came here. It was a blast. Yeah. yeah. It's hot. I don't think you could be disappointed with the turnout. <laughs> at all. I mean, that was, yeah. That was I know great. I wasn't. And the right. you know if if you could, it's great to be able to visit a lot. I mean, if you could take a little bit of that and go see a little bit of this, and um, we had we had the three events here. It seemed like a lot to me. Yeah. You know. Oh sure. Um, I think it was cool to have all these events yeah. on the same day. Um, well, in town. Yeah. Our town. Right. Our There's yeah. just yeah. so many yeah. different Our things town. going on. Yeah. There was also the lumberjack show, which is yeah, we're, yeah. Show. yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, <laughs> I, I saw you putting together the footage from it, but I didn't get to uh, witness any of it because I was setting up a booth. It's always a cool event. You you just see things and games that you you don't typically see. You know, really uh, unique stuff. They had five or six different. Uh, activities for the kids that they're all doing. It was more of a uh, sign up and do it thing this sure. year. They they put on a little show, but then throughout most of the day, it was just uh, the kids trying all these different things. Get your activities. hands dirty, throw the those instructors, Yeah, throwing the axes, chopping wood. Yeah. Um, they had there was an obstacle course where you take a wheelbarrow and you throw the logs in, and <laughs> throw them it. down, then you gotta pick up the logs there. and That's throw them awesome. through this hole. Yeah. I, I know yeah. Joe Regan uh, from he Joe Regan so Tree Service. He's, he's amazing. He uh, he him and his wife used to compete in the uh, in those competitions back That's in great. the day, and and so he knows exactly how to run one. And I I tell you, I love it flipping through the channels and. And you get to see a lumberjack show amazing. on TV. It's amazing. Yeah. It's unbelievable. The one that I always want to do, I forget what you call it, but you chop a couple notches, put the wedge in, jump on, do it again, jump up and higher, and then chop the top off. I'd like to see you do that. <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time following that. Was that. A long I time think you ago. should. I, maybe next show yeah, we maybe, should do something about that. Sure. I, I don't know if I can get the pole in here that. to do it. But we need a next video. Show. Yeah, next we show. need a video. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't go this year, sadly, because I had too many things to try to organize. I did go last year, and I mentioned this before. I did throw an axe, and there was a, there's a helpful guy there who mm -hmm. says, okay, and he tells you how to stand, he tells you how to hold it, and I'm flinging this axe. I did not know that um, Catherine, Kathy Boudet was taking a photograph of me, which then was in the paper. <laughs> um, but it looked, you know, I said, hey, I don't know. I look kind of like I know what I'm doing. I did miss the target, but I didn't hit it. It was like a one. whole process. It is a through. process. Yeah. Which you just don't, I just would never think. I saw the instructor showing one guy. That's and, what I'm saying. They have a guy. You're going to put your elbow this way, That's this, right. this way. That's right. They help you. <laughs> Which yeah. I appreciate it. But they do have women um, contests to throw the axe. They have men contests to throw the axe. They have men and women <coughs> sawing a log. Yep. You know, the best the male, axe female saw. team. And then they have some kids, not too many kids contests because they're a lot of sharp kids. Right, right. Um, so, but back to um, Family Day. I was helping at the HPTA booth um, building a cardboard box maze. It was so fun. The kids loved this. So this is, you know, what did we do in the olden days before all the technology? We we built stuff out of boxes or we made forts Pretty out of the forts. table with the, you know, bed spread over it. And uh, so it was great. The kids loved it. Um, I worked with Jen Rudd, who was in there. Mm -hmm. I forget the name of the other woman who showed up later. And an amazing young man named Justin. Thank you, Justin, if you're watching. Um, with Duck just taping the boxes together, fitting this box into that box. My favorite was a low rectangle because they had to do the you know that basic training crawl on their belly to oh, get yeah, through that yeah, one belly crawl, sure. yeah and then uh, i saw a bunch just a bunch of great activities i tell you oh yeah the, right next to us was the garden club and they're decorating little pumpkin gourds Aww. um then there was face painting there was henna tattoos face yeah, painting was very tattoos. popular face painting was they the biggest line was it gretchen stefan who was doing that because there were some beautiful was, butterfly oh, I faces. Face yeah. I wasn't sure who was, was over there. I didn't get over it. It was amazing. Uh, all the kids coming yeah. and every, everything I so shot bright. of it in the video. I have uh, to give a shout out to Joelle Crosby, who gave me this fabulous, I don't know if you can see a turtle tattoo from Poly Arts. And I told someone I got a tattoo, and then I showed it to them, and it actually took them a minute to realize that glitters aren't something. Glitter is not something that's yeah, that, that they'll it's so fun. To the skin. Yeah, Thanks, Joelle. How long will that stay there? I don't know, it's been since, and I do take a shower every day. And, you know, I can't, it doesn't, it's not coming off, you know. I don't know. 
Do you think it'll change It'll my be skin color? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I don't, know. don't get too much sun there. Maybe, maybe we can make a little off spool out of this. Yeah, um, I don't know. So uh, one, of the, one of the other booths I saw that uh, Bay Path was there and uh, brought their puppies, and, Aww, which is weird to have a bunch of dogs on the field when you're not oh, allowed yeah, to have right? dogs on yeah. the field around school. What property. did they do with the things that dogs produce? Well, they must. I'm well, sure they, they got. Hopefully, permission. they packed it. Of course, dog. they did. <laughs> Just like everyone that brought their dogs down to Poly Arts. Right. So sure. there, there was lots of dogs around that day. <laughs> I don't know. And there was some llamas at Poly Arts too, which there were llamas. There were. Well, the thing is too, I think people. People think of dogs as part of the family. So yeah. it's family day. That means dog. I guess so. Uh, tons of bouncy houses and a lot of yeah. activities. Uh, the high school, a lot of high school volunteers, they were there. As soon as I got there, I pulled my car up and they came right to the car. Can I help you unload? It was awesome. That's what John Ritz said when I asked him earlier. Um, John Ritz is in our, uh, I almost said phone booth, in the sound booth. Um, but. John Ritz said that he was so impressed with the crew of kids who really helped all the time and just showed yeah. up. What do you need? What do you? And yeah, there were they're out a there lot of them. Guided people to pocket enthusiastic. Spots. Yes. Yeah. And so they had we, pumpkin tic tac toe, which was pretty cool. That's fun. That. Where was that over by the? Uh, yeah, those were the games were stuff. where yeah. the bouncy Corn houses and nice. the bouncy house. I didn't get that far. Yeah. I could barely see the stage, and when I couldn't see the stage, I would zoom my camera in and watch it on the TV yeah, screen. There was a I bunch of kids there. playing. And, and did you see clever. Brendan Headstone in the dunk tank? I did. Tank? I did. That's when John had to leave to go work on the Trails Club and left me alone there. <laughs> and uh, I had nobody watch my booths because I wanted to go throw a softball and dunk Brendan. <laughs> I know. So I well, it was kind of, I watched a few, a little bit. Um, who is the guy from American Climbers who's tall, dark hair? Richard. Uh, Richie. Oh, no, uh, I think it's Richie. I, don't, I can't remember. Yeah. But anyway, he was, I don't know. But he came up with his child. And the child was throwing, yeah. and Richie hit the thing, you know, so Brendan every, went in. Brendan, and Brendan saw me so afterwards, cute. and he said that every kid that missed ran up and hit that's it. That's what so I'm saying. He went in he every went in. time. He went in. <laughs> and that's, that's a lot. Have you ever done dunk tank? It was I a hot have day, done. so that True. might not have been that bad. That's not the problem. But have you ever done <laughs> yes. dunk tank? No. Yes, I have. Yeah, getting up in that seat every time. You know, yeah, he got dunk three, four times. Not yeah. bad, but he got dunk over 30 <laughs> Times. But I have to say, when I was in the dunk tank, it was for um, the thing in the in the fall. They used to have a, some kind of celebration in the fall. I forget what carnival. Um, but for me, being in the dunk tank, it wasn't going in the water. That was fine, you know. And the water's pretty high, and yeah. I guess I'm not a tall yeah. person, so I went under every time. It wasn't I could? Some people could just stand up. Right. The, the the you know the shelf drops and they could stand up. But I went down. So for me, the problem was. Every time I went down, the water went up my nose. Ah. Every time. And if you, and there were other people that had been in that tank before me. And You'll have uh, to get some nose plugs. You, well, time. that was the thing. So I, I think after that I had a little sinus infection, no surprise. No, because no surprise. you think about yeah. it, you know, I don't know what was in the water. And So for me, I, I loved doing the dunk tank. It was fun, except water up my nose. I did not like that at all. all. Right. So, yeah, that's not fun. No. So listen, ears. if you went to Family Day, yeah. give us a call. Send us an email. Join us on Facebook. What's Do your something. favorite thing? Let us know. What Send was us favorite? a smoke signal. And, and the big <laughs> question, the big question, let's get it out there. Should it be done annually? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think so, too. Um, someone, I think it was John again, was saying that looking around, he saw families. He saw the diversity that is now our rich um, richly diverse community, sure. families of every national origin, having a great time, smiling, laughing, meeting people they had never met before. You know, I know just from the kids crawling through the little cardboard boxes, they didn't know each other, crash into each other in the middle. Oh, hi, how are you? You know, so it just, it was just, it's such a wonderful right. spirit to the day. So I think, I mean, I'd is, love to see as long as the budget can afford it. I have nothing oh, on the well, face. that brings us to you know, fireworks. Because the fireworks, that, that's a lot of lot of money. A lot of bang for the buck, as we like to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Literally. It that's is, probably the most expensive part. Yeah. It is the most expensive yeah. part because um, most of the things were donated. You right. know, you had uh, the stage was donated. You had this display, this display donated. The lines donated that dunk tank yeah. that I know of. Yeah. Uh, so you had all those sponsorships, but when it came down to spending the money, you know, they had to go for the grant. Right. And that well, they, it's good because I had to miss the 300th. I was down at a wedding in Little Compton for mm -hmm. my cousins. I missed the, the 300th celebration. I missed... 
the fireworks and people talked about it and I thought, what's well, fireworks? You know, fireworks, are, yeah, okay, see them 4th of July. These were amazing. Mm. They were amazing. Just, it was half time an hour. Time to the music. Just when, time to the music and it was great music. It wasn't just, mm. you know, 1812 Overture, which came first, right. but then it was, you know, cause you're happy. <laughs> and then um, you know, something about, you're a star, it's a sky full of stars. They just had these wonderful thematic songs and, and amazing. I've never seen the one, the one that that's so vivid in my mind was this white, these little white crawly lines. And then out of the white, and low, out of the white crawly lines came all these red like dots. I don't know if it was like coral or something. I've never seen that. Yeah, they, uh, they did brag while talking because I know a few people on the committee. Mm -hmm. They said not only were the fireworks going to be better than the 300s, the, um, I believe 20 or 25 percent of the fireworks were a brand new firework that no one's seen That's yet. That's what I'm wow. saying. I saw like, new it's, it's stuff. new stuff yeah. that wasn't done before. So yeah. it's like, and I think that's wonderful. But what do you think, uh, this email here, what about doing it in the spring before everyone goes on vacation? I mean, I, um, I, I that's a good idea. I can see that. Yeah. I kind of like it to kick off the year. And to tie it into poly arts. I don't know. For me, somehow. Well, the reason why I... Why would you like I spring? don't like it. I don't like the spring. And only for the reason is the weather Wet. is so lousy yeah, in the spring. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting. Weather. This, this here, always the first two weeks is usually... Or the second week in September is usually the best weather ever. You know, that's true. Of the year. Dry, usually it's warm. Like, it's, it's like San Diego dry. for the week, I should say. And it's... it's Unless there's a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> which can happen but I, I can see it. I think it's going to be great anytime you have it but somehow sure. coming back you know to do poly arts and uh, right I think they did it right having poly arts and then yeah. you have the family day the lumberjack yep. show all in one just so much yeah. going on it gives you just so many reasons to be there. Yeah. And rather than have three different days for these three different events, uh, if you have one, you know, there'll be a lot of people that say, all right, it's one day, so I'm going to block that day off in my calendar and make sure I'm available to be exactly. around Hopkinton that day. Exactly. I think the only downside is I would have loved to have been, I, I didn't have time to do, to look at everything for Family Fun Day. I didn't have time to get to the, lumberjack show i didn't have time to listen to all the bands you know and it's but i guess next year i'll just try to start at a different place or volunteer in a different part of the field because it was so, there were so many things yeah i was hoping uh i would i would like to see it instead of work it you know and be able to go visit more because there was so much right. going on and and knowing a lot of people in there it's it'd be great to do yep. it so but anyways, All right. we're, we're getting ready for our next segment, yep. the good old Equifax breach. Oops. Love to hear your comments on that one. Yeah. So let us know what your thoughts are. Were you affected? What are you doing to take care of yourself? What's going on? But we'll talk about that when we finish up with this break. This week on From the Vault, PAW's Who's Next? A 1998 wrestling show hosted by Dave Pilot and Jeff Wharton featured a dozen wrestlers that competed in backyards and wrestled on trampolines. The referee has spent more time with Superfly than watching the match. And, and what just happened there? Look at this. Destruction won't tag him. And this oh. allows Cactus to get a nice submission hold on. And he pulls the arm back to keep him from tagging now. This week on Hopkins and Coffee Break, the ladies sit down with our state senator, Karen Spilka. Let our pot of revenue kind of grow. Right. Yeah, yes. so so that 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 really does keep me up during budget time. So we the, the governor comes out with his budget in January. The house does their budget in April. We do ours in May. So if people don't see me as much in mm -hmm. mostly April, May, June, we we have conference committee where we resolve the day. This week on the Golden Pan, Reno teaches Lisa his famous spaghetti with artichoke sauce. Yeah, so. It has to <laughs> yeah. I just can't wait, Reno. They're no, so excited. Yeah. It smells good. good. It, it looks good, good too. Good. Well, well, that is my bowl. I can have that, but I can. All uh, right. Give him some of those. Oh, oh does that look good? Oh. Yeah. So. And we're back. 
to talk about Equifax. Were you affected? Did you get a letter in the mail? What did you do? I didn't get anything. I didn't get nothing yet. But I have a friend uh -huh. who said he got a letter in the mail that said he had been compromised. He also said that he got a disc in the mail that was a, an anti-hacking um, thing that he could put on his computer free. Hmm. You yeah. give me a yeah. look like you don't believe yeah. this is well, a real thing. Well, first off, if you got it from someone you don't know, and they say, put this in my computer, it's free, this will help you, it's junk. Really? Absolutely. You know, this big thing with this data breach, okay, 143 million Americans, um, that's nearly half, what is it, nearly half of the current U.S. population's data was leaked. The number exceeds the number of U.S. households. If you applied for any credit in the digital age, you are likely included in that number. Well, I would think it would apply to everybody right. because everyone right. goes through Equifax. Right, but now, the, now you think about, okay, there's these websites here that you can go and find out if you were. Put in your last 60 social, put in this, put in this. Yeah, give us your date of well, birth and your mother's maiden name and I all just the information. Yeah, I just recently heard of a story of someone who put in a bunch of gobbledygook and they said, yeah, you're infected, do something about it, you know. Um, well, they, what they were saying is it was John Ritz who just mentioned that yeah. someone at work right. figured out it's a random number generator. Correct. Because he put in uh, the information that wasn't his and it wasn't a right number, social number, and it mm -hmm. wasn't his name. And then it generated something saying your credit has been compromised, but he right. wasn't even inputting real information. So, you know, at what point do you worry, well, what is the real information? Has there really been a breach? Has it, you know, and, and if I get the fix, is the fix coming from a hacker? Like you were just saying, right. maybe the letter and the disc is from a hacker. Absolutely. And then, you know, people taking advantage of this to, to just make it worse. I, I think if the information came to me from the Social Security Administration. But even then. No problem. Well, How do you no. know? Well, it's easy. Call them up. Did you send me this? Okay. You, you, you gotta you do. Call your, the number that you gotta do your due diligence. No, yeah. no, you call the number that you know. You don't call the number they give you. <laughs> right. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, what do you do to protect yourself? You know, right now people are gonna get a ton more emails that are gonna be phishing, and it's all about this Equifax breach. And these emails here, if if you didn't ask for this stuff, don't use it. You know, don't. Oh, this yeah. is gonna help you. This is gonna help you. Don't yep. do it. That's well, the thing I loved, uh, I mean, if there's anything, I try to look for the good thing. The good thing is Attorney General Maura Healey is suing. Um, I, and she said um, 3 million Massachusetts re residents have been um, hacked. And so her, her, alleged, her allegation is that the company failed to protect personal information knowing that the system was vulnerable to hackers. So I personally, I don't even like the cloud. What is the cloud? Where is my information going if I put it in the cloud? Who else is in there with, I don't know. What Our is show that? is floating around in the cloud. And yeah, so if no, you're watching I, on Facebook Live, I, I, join this conversation on is. the cloud. I'll get it right here it on my cloud? cloud reader. I don't know, cloud reader. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so anyway, she, her, the quote is, we allege that Equifax knew about the vulnerabilities in its system for months but utterly failed to keep the personal information of nearly 3 million Massachusetts residents safe from hackers. We are suing because Equifax needs to pay for its mistakes, make our residents whole, and fix the problem so it never happens again. So this happened, what, September 11th is September that, 11th, that yeah. paper. Um, but September 7th is September uh, 7th, when they announced it. It did not it notify. Right around that time was when I was checking to see if I could qualify for a mortgage. So, Unibank is online trying to check into my credit rating right. and my information. Um, another private mortgage broker is checking information. So now all of my information is at the top of whatever the most recent search has been. Right. So I didn't get anything saying my credit was compromised, but how could it not be if it's the most recent? First in, you know, last in, first out. Is right. why I learned that in business school, which <laughs> I only took two classes in that. So yikes. All right, so what else? What else do you have? Well, also um, some great advice is to sign up for an online account with the Social Security Administration. Oh. The information uh, about you contain an Equifax leak provides enough information for a criminal to open an account in your name. Do it before they do. Yep. So and this I says just, I just tried it. I went as soon as I saw it. They give you the link here for the cool. 
uh, ssa.gov. And so I go to create my account, and they said, uh, uh, I tried three times, and I failed because right, I just moved from Medway to Ashland. So I used my Ashland address first, then I did my Medway Ash address. It said no. And then the next one was uh, my Hopkins one, where it was before that, and then I got frozen out. So do you want to share that, or is that something they could share with people? Oh, yeah. You just go to the Social Security Administration, my, you know, slash my account, slash to sign up. So it's, it's, SS, what is, what is it's the exact? It's SSA.gov. Okay. Social Security Administration. SSA.gov slash my account, my account slash. To, no, just to, to sign up. Oh. Yeah, well, slash to sign up. Okay. The other thing I want to read you from this. Um, so the, the complaint is from March 7th to July 7th, 30th of 2017, sensitive and private consumer information was exposed to intruders by relying on certain computer code that it knew was vulnerable to exploitation, exploitation, excuse me, without safeguards. Um, still unknown third parties infiltrated Equifax's computer system through its dispute portal, mm -hmm. a page that allows consumers to submit information to start a claim. To, to, to dispute the information on the credit report. How could they possibly have a dispute portal that would let in these, I mean, really, if they're supposed to protect our credit and they're analyzing our credit, shame on them. You know, I hope, I hope it goes through and I get a lot of money out of this. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, yeah. another bit of advice that, that's given here, this is from um, the University of, um, which one is this mm -hmm. one here? This University of Oregon. And well, place how do you know they're not hackers? Place, <laughs> because I do my due diligence. Okay. So place a security freeze on your credit file with each of the major credit bureaus. It's the single most effective thing you can do it to prevent identity theft for the financially uh, motivated there. Uh, security freeze blocks creditors from being able to view your credit file unless you take action to unfreeze it beforehand. So if you freeze with your with the uh, credit reporting companies, yep. and you go to apply for that loan, you right. apply, you unfreeze it for them, or you give them the way to get in to do it. It's yep. You can unlock it for your unlock particular it for needs. Of course, exactly. that's good. This, this is another thing that's unbelievable. They knew, they knew that there was a breach r right about July 29th. They knew. That somebody had been in there and had some caused some problems. They failed to provide timely notice. They didn't tell anybody until September 7th. So from beginning of August, that's a full month, month and 10 days, mm -hmm. where they knew something had happened and had been hacked, and they were still allowing people, or maybe they protected it, but they didn't tell anybody that there was something happening in there. You know, I mean, that sh that's just, to me, how can you, how can you still be a, a reputable business and leave everybody's right. uh, credit vulnerable like that? I got an email here that said, sure, and to freeze your info, they charge you money. Now, is that right? <laughs> no, it's not it's right. It's not right. You Good know, comment. It's, it's, not, it's not right. No, because they, they really, I mean, they're, what is that called? It's misrepresentation of their... Yeah, I can think of all kinds of <laughs> fancy legal terms for what they did that was wrong. Yeah, they did. Misrepresenting. They, they said, you know, give us all your information because we are the credit bureau and we're going to judge whether you have good credit or not. Yeah. But in the same time, they're, they're, they let people in there that could damage people's credit. You know, you have to change sure. everything when sure. that happens. So you're talking like you have uh, TransUnion, uh, Innovis and Experian, Equifax. Those are your major sites that you I've never wanna. heard of Innovis. Yeah. I'm How do you spell sure. that? I-N-N-O-V-I-S. Okay. And the, another bit of advice here to help yourself is always, and I've learned this lesson, check your credit report at least annually. You, you get it free from all these companies every year. They're required under the law. Uh, some offer twice a year for free, mm -hmm. but everybody has to give you at least one. Um, and one thing I didn't even think of, but I think it sounds like great advice is file your taxes before the fraudster does. Before the what does? The fraudster, whoever's uh, stealing you your account information. Well, what I'm saying is do it before they do it. In other words, as soon as you get your W-2s, right, 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 right. 
Yeah. That's what yeah. I do. I, I, as soon as I have them, I'm in there. Yeah. Because I, I, um, I need that money back. Yeah. The government yeah. has my money. I appreciate that. I appreciate everything the government does, but I need it back. So I filed to get my return. I do mine really fast so ASAP. I know how much I have to pay by April 15th. Yeah, so good. <laughs> so whatever our reasons are, we, we avoid the fraudster because we're in there first. Yeah, that's good advice. So, and of course, the other thing you can do is always check, you know, mass.gov and, you know, see what our attorney general is doing about all this and follow, yeah, follow the cool. legit advice, you know, and, and just like all your news that you read online, mm -hmm. you know, just don't go and and uh, just ex well, the first thing that shows up on Google. You know, <laughs> I know you gotta you gotta know your That's sites. Fishing. You gotta trust your sites. Yeah. Right, right, you know? right, right. I have to also say um, shout out to the Attorney General. Um, not this one, but Martha Coakley um, helped me when Bank of America did some interesting things with my refinance and not refinance my loan modification, mm -hmm. and it was wrong. So I called the Attorney General. And I said, this happened, and I don't know what to do. And they said, all right, send me your information. And they took them down. You know, they had to, they had to go through with it. They had to remove the foreclosure that was not, a for it shouldn't have been there. Right. So I have to say, you know, our attorney general is really, 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 really there to help us. Oh, no doubt. And, and they're, us. they're all there to help us. They, they really are. But some, getting some, there, yeah. getting there sometimes takes a little effort, and you've got to right. be a little more patient with them because... You know, you, you are being real nice to them, but for every time one person is nice to them, they get five people that are probably not so nice to them, and, it, and they probably tie up a lot of their time. So oh. I would, you know, you get more with, what is it, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar? Exactly. So, you get more with uh, honey than vinegar. But, yeah, definitely check those state sites. And I know, too, I, I don't think, like, the sites like Credit Karma that you get the phone apps and, you know, you can check your credit score instantly. They're not totally accurate, but they're pretty close. Uh, but at least you get an idea if something's going on. Because a, a lot of those sites, a lot of those phone apps will pop up a message if, you know, somebody's, like, if uh, uh, someone applied for a loan. I actually applied for a uh, car loan. And sure enough, they check my credit. And as I'm in the waiting room waiting for this to go through, I get a... A little message that says, "Hey, you know your credit's being checked." And was that recently? You know, this year was this year was last year. I was looking, I was going to oh. look into a pickup truck. Yeah. Yes. And, what color? Uh, black. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Of course. Yeah. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> besides that, it was <laughs> nice to know that uh, things like that work. Right. You know, like one of my credit cards. Um, before the receipt was printed to me, I have a text saying, "Hey, your credit card was used. If that was you, ignore this message." Right. That's nice. That was great. I didn't even have the receipt yet. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I've had a phone call once in a while um, to say just want just checking just to make sure that because I guess I was on in a, on a trip in Florida many years ago and they called the bank called just to say your credit card was just used in Florida and we just wanted to make sure that that right. was actually right. a real thing. So yeah, so I think you know I think by and large businesses are doing a good job protecting us, right. um, which is why this Equifax. Situation is even more And you got to remember all the, all the good people, too, that they have working on these securities. There are better people just trying to break in. Not better. Just, They're not better. When I say, when I say better. <laughs> they, they are very they good at by, their craft. They get by the good. Yeah. They They're get, very crafty. Right. There's always someone better. Yeah. <laughs> I get, we just got this email here. My credit right. card company emailed me to say they saw I bought plane tickets so I could use my card when away from home. Did I read that right? My credit Well, mm -hmm. because if they had shut down the card looking at the plane ticket purchase, then the person would have gone to Europe and not had any been mm -hmm. able to use money. Right. So so that kind of communication is is awesome. Thank you for telling us that. Um, so just to just that they're on top of it. And I know I've when I've had to um, put more purchases on than my credit limit, oh, sure. I call them and say, I need to up my credit limit to this much for a 24-hour period because I'm going to have to, you know, put right. a down payment on my daughter's shower, whatever it was. Sure. Um, or whatever. I, I can't remember. I did the same thing with uh, uh, Middlesex, my bank yeah. card, and it was nice that, uh, you know, I get this call saying, hey, listen, you, someone's trying to put right. this uh, purchase through and you, you're only allowed to do X amount at right, a time. Right, exactly. 
So I didn't know that they put a limit on your card. Yeah, they do. And you have to change that or whatever. So it's, yeah. it's, it's good. They're, they're watching. Everyone They're watching. Watch. And, and I think, you know, if you think about, there are some times when you have to put a lot on the credit card. You just, things happen all at once. All at once, yeah. um, But it's nice to know that there is a check and balance, right. except for Equifax. Um, yeah, well, you know, they, they, of course, uh, and a lot of this here has to do with, you know, People just trying to cover their butts. Well, that's the part that's you know, the problem. And, oh, yeah, this will get, this will be good. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble for that. Yeah, Let's well. just let it go. And So the fact, I mean, again, the fact that they knew that, you know, from March 7th to July 29th, by July 29th, they knew it had happened. Hmm. And they didn't say anything till September 7th. And it's just that, just, I'm, I can't believe and that. And I believe Target, who was one of the first major oh, ones, yep. For a long time, they came right out. They did. And That's they, what I'm saying. And they came out smelling like roses afterwards. And didn't TJ Maxx? TJ Maxx was well, the was same another. company. Yeah. So the thing is, right? If you say right away, you're we've been hacked. Protect your credit. Yeah. Let us know. Or even um, weren't some bank um, ATM cards affected by that right. at one point? Right. So then you go into the bank. They give you a new ATM. So if you know right away, like if Equifax had just said, "Hey, we know there's a breach." to do everything you can then every, then people would have been protected yeah, people would have been ready more quickly and, yeah now it's like okay here here, here gone three months gone by and i can't and a half i months. just can't even but that's typical big business people yeah. get so much bigger than they should <laughs> and, i guess and, and we so, pay for it, so. so again you know we are we are a talk show doesn't mean we just want to talk the whole time so if you have any thoughts call in uh 508-435-7880 or Email if, us. If you can do that in the next 30 seconds. Yep. So. And, and we want to <laughs> let you know that next week, we know you're really sad about yes. this, but we won't be having the live Jen and Margie show because there is an amazing live forum at the Senior Center on the Main Street Corridor Project. So be there uh, so you can be heard. Yeah, they will, they're going to open up at uh, 6 o'clock so people will walk around and look at all the plans. And then at 6.30, they're going to do a presentation for an hour. Yep. And then... So uh, we hope you can meeting. join us there. I'll be there live at be uh, there. the Senior Forum. So, all right. Bye. See you in two weeks.